This video's aim is to help if you've sprained your wrist. A sprain is an injury to ligaments. Here is the anatomy of the area. Ligaments hold bones together and therefore limit excessive movement of the joints. Sprains are graded in relation to their severity. Grade 1. Mild stretching of the ligament without causing joint instability. Grade 2. Partial rupture of the ligament but without causing joint instability. Grade 3. Complete rupture of the ligament causing joint instability. Only grade 1 sprains will heal by themselves in a few weeks if you follow the pricing guidelines. Most grade 2 sprains should settle completely with intervention from a physiotherapist. Grade 3 sprains will need medical attention so you must go to A&E. There are many ligaments in the wrist that can be stretched or torn resulting in a sprain. This occurs when the wrist is bent forcefully such as a fall onto an outstretched hand. However, it is possible that you have more than just a sprain. Some other potential injuries are green stick fracture in a toddler, a growth plate fracture in an adolescent, a scaphoid fracture in a young adult, a collies fracture in an adult, triangular fibre cartilage tear, and many more. If you are unsure of the diagnosis, then you should consult your GP or a physiotherapist. Common symptoms are swelling in the wrist, pain at the time of the injury, Persistent pain when you move your wrist, bruising or discoloration of the skin around the wrist, tenderness at the injury site, loss of grip strength, a warm feeling to the skin around your wrist. If you have a wrist sprain, then immediately follow the pricing guidelines. Protect the wrist. Rest the wrist from aggravating activities. Ice the wrist. Apply ice for no longer than 15 minutes at a time and always wrap the ice in a towel to avoid damage to the skin. Compression of the area will help to limit swelling. This should not stop blood flow. Elevate the wrist where possible to help limit swelling. Movement. Keep moving to avoid stiffening up but don't irritate the area. For the first 72 hours you should avoid heat alcohol or massage to the area. After the first 72 hours, you need to get the area moving. Flexion. With your elbow straight and your hand palm facing up, bend your wrist so that your fingers point towards the floor. Use your opposite hand to apply extra stretch. Hold for 30 seconds and then swap sides if needed. Extension. Rest your elbow on the edge of a table with a towel under your elbow. Straighten it out until it is fully straight. Now use your opposite hand to apply an extra stretch. Hold for 30 seconds and swap sides if needed. Pronation and supination. With your arms by your side and your elbows bent at 90 degrees, interlink your fingers in front of you with your thumbs on top. Now twist your hands so that your thumbs are pointing to the right, hold for 30 seconds, and then twist until they are pointing to the left and hold for a further 30 seconds. You should do these exercises at least three times a day or ideally little and often. You should try to avoid activities that irritate the area and increase your pain. 
Once you are settling down, then you need to strengthen the area gradually. Grip. Hold a squeezable ball in your hand and squeeze it as hard as you can. Hold for five seconds and slowly release. Repeat five times and swap sides if needed. Wrist extensor strengthening. Holding a light weight in your hand with your forearm resting on a table and your hand palm side down, slowly lower the dumbbell down towards the floor and then lift it back up towards the ceiling. Your forearm shouldn't move at all throughout and it should be pain free. Repeat eight times and swap arms if needed. Wrist flexor strengthening. Holding a light weight in your hand with your forearm resting on a table and your hand palm side up, slowly lower the dumbbell down towards the floor and then lift it back towards the ceiling. The forearm shouldn't move at all throughout and it should be pain free. Repeat eight times and swap arms if needed. As you get stronger, you must advance the resistance level gradually, but you can only advance if it's pain free to do so. If you get worsening symptoms or are unsure, then initially reduce the push into discomfort, and if this isn't enough, then stop altogether and consult your physiotherapist. After several days, you should hopefully notice increased flexibility and possibly reduce pain generally. Remember, injuries take time to recover and do so gradually, so be patient, there are no miracle cures.